He is a uh, Bass Northern Opens pro. Uh, our co-host Joel Shangle is actually in uh, at the FLW Tour at Pickwick, and his reception is awful. So uh, we're not bringing him on the show tonight, unfortunately. We're going to miss him because he is a uh, fantastic addition to the show and an extremely talented talk show host. So you get the B team tonight. But you know what? It's Cinco de Mayo. We're going to have a good time. We're going to learn about the Shad Spawn. So thank you, everyone, for coming on to Livingston Live. So tonight, we're going to be talking about how to take advantage of that Shad Spawn that Dave and Brent were just talking about. And with us tonight is Mr. Brent Chapman, 2012 Bassmaster Angler of the Year, former Angler of the Year, and uh, uh, one heck of a fisherman, 20-year vet on the, uh, the Bassmaster Pro Series. Brent, how's it going? I, I'm great, Nick. Thank you. And you guys are in the uh, the trailer. Where are you guys at right now? Uh, we are actually at uh, Texoma Lake. Uh, you know, those, those that follow the circuit might know we have uh, Bass Fest coming up here uh, at Texoma Lake. Uh, the I believe the first week of June. So uh, we had a week in between Wheeler Lake and Toledo Bend. So we decided to come over here and uh, do some scouting for a couple days. Uh, Texoma Lake is 10 feet high. So uh, uh, a little flooded and the conditions are, are quite a bit different but it was nice to get out uh, do some running around and uh, got to uh, put some of the ladies and lures to, to the test and uh, got to spend some time on the water with my son and uh, uh, spent the day getting tackle ready and getting geared up for uh, Toledo Bend that starts on Monday nice nice well let's lead into this this whole entire webinar is all based around the shad spawn I'm, I'm jacked for this actually because I'm from Washington State I moved to Texas two years ago. I didn't really know what a shad was, let alone know what a shad spawn was. And so I'm in the same boat as wanting to learn a whole mountain on how to identify the shad spawn, how to fish it. So tonight we're going to be talking about how to identify it, how to approach it, what type of lures to use, and also different you know tactics besides, say, reaction bait fishing, other ways to fish it as well. So this is going to be a full-blown course in-depth on fishing the shad spawn. So leading into it, the first topic we got is, you know, when do shad spawn and why is it so effective to target these spawning shad? So, you know, that that really this question leads into, you know, what time of year and what water temperature do shad typically spawn? Yeah, uh, you know, and, and that was a question for, for me that it's like, you know, I, I need to dive deeper into this and, and understand it just because these last... Uh, two or three events that we fished, you know, it's been an, uh, a key player in those events. And, and I, I would suspect next week at Toledo Bend, uh, the shad spawn will, will be a big part of it as well. But uh, like I'd mentioned earlier, uh, you know, fishing is not an exact science and neither is the spawn. And uh, from what I've, I've, what I've read online, the science side of it was, uh, you know, shad don't spawn until the water gets in the upper 60s and uh, usually around a full moon. Well, we didn't have upper 60s when we were at Bull Shoals or Norfolk. We barely had 60 degree water and shad were already spawning. So it kind of made me realize right then and there that you have to always be paying attention to it. And from what, from what I can tell and what I've learned is, is bass typically will, the majority of bass will spawn before the shad will. So if you get to a lake and you know that the, the bass spawn has been going on for several weeks or several months, and that water temp's getting to be into the to the mid 60s to upper 60s that it's time to uh to look for for a shad spawn and uh you know that would be the biggest thing i i would do right there is just paying attention to the water temperatures and uh kind of know knowing the conditions that uh you know it, it's getting to be late april into may it's time to start looking for uh, spawning shad for sure no definitely i'm actually got some uh, pictures up here if you guys can see uh, the spawn and shad up there. I pulled some pictures off of Google. I've been seeing this a ton here uh, locally lately. But you know, why is it such a good opportunity, Brent, to catch post-spawn bass? Like, why why is it such a good opportunity when these you know shad are up on the bank? Well, uh, you know, bass don't get big by uh, not not eating a lot of you know a lot of uh, food, and you know, shad is one of the uh, uh, major forages for bass. And, and when they get up there and and spawn it's a perfect time for them to uh, set up and, and ambush those shad. And, and uh, you know, bass love to ambush prey. So if they can go just sit on a riprap bank and wait for those uh, uh, giant schools of shad to get in there and start spawning, uh, you know, that, that's what they're going to do. And, 
uh, you know, like I said, Shad or, or one of their, their main forages. And when, when they can get up there on a, on a particular bank and, and just wait for them to come by, that's what they're going to do. And they're going to get, get fat and that, you know, that the bass are wanting to fatten up and, and kind of recuperate after their own spawn and get ready for the heat of the summer. No, definitely. Well, you know what? That's the reason why we're all here. Because right now, across the you know across the south and across the country, and even getting up into the northern climates, those shad are uh, on a hard spawn right now, and those bass are taking advantage of the easy meal that's in front of them. And so, as a pop-in guest for tonight, I just wanted to welcome Michael from One Rod One Reel Fishing, YouTube fishing star here. Uh, he's going to join us uh, tonight. How's it going, Michael? Hey, going great. Thanks for having me. Awesome to Hi, meet Mike. all you guys. Yeah, we're glad to have you, Michael. Well, you know, we are all learning here, and this is something that uh, Living Some Live is all about, the learning opportunity, giving you a one-on-one -on -one with our pro anglers to pick their brains to make you a better fisherman. And that's, I know, what you're all about at One Rod, One Real Fishing is how-to fishing and uh, sharing your love of fishing. And so I know you had a question on this, you know, shad spawn topic you wanted to ask. Oh, yeah, I've really learned so much listening to you guys uh, from the beginning of the broadcast, but uh, maybe one more specific question. I know you guys are talking about blueback herring. Um, is there a much of a difference between the spawning habits and times of threadfin versus gizzard shad? I know those are two uh, shad species that are pretty prevalent in uh, bigger water systems. Well, that that's a good question, and to be honest with you, I, I don't know. Uh, the one thing I can tell you, the, the difference I know between uh, gizzard shad and threadfin shad. Gizzard shad are the shad a, a lot of times that get really, really big. You'll see ospreys swoop down and catch them, and uh, sometimes you'll see them on the bank, and they'll, they'll be 8 or 10 or 12 inches long dead. I mean, they, they get really big. I know at home at Lake of the Ozarks, the, the bass will actually eat those great big gizzard shad in the fall, and that's why they use really big baits uh, to catch them. But uh, I, I do know threadfin shad, uh, are more of a southern uh, bait fish. That they're more in the south. Uh, the lake I actually live on, they they would actually stock uh, threadfin shad. I believe when the water temp got to about once it hit about 60 degrees or 50 degrees, they'd put them in our lake, and they would shad. They would spawn several times throughout the the uh, spring and summer, and then uh, they actually die when the water temp hit uh, below. I want to say 40 something degrees. So uh, gizzard shad are definitely uh, probably more uh, seen all around the country. Uh, the threadfin shad are, are the shad that you'll typically see the big die-offs of uh, in in the winter time and all that. So, but uh, you know, there's one thing I can say about shad, whether they're gizzard shad or threadfin, is uh, bass love them, and uh, Livingston makes a whole lot of lures that uh, imitate uh, gizzard shad and threadfin shad for sure. Yeah, I got a picture up here. Uh, yeah, I got a picture up here of a threadfin shad. We're just talking about is you know that two to three inches, four inches long. Uh, you know, not necessarily a big shad. And then you go to and there's another picture of uh, you know the little uh, threadfin shad. And then this picture is the big gizzard shad. This picture you can see all these big gizzards up spawning, and look how big they are. They're that you know four, five, six, seven inch size bait fish, and so there is not necessarily a huge distinction uh, between the uh, you know habits of them, but definitely you know the size and profile of those different types of uh, shad is, is quite prevalent, as you can see in the you know photos we got up here. Um, you know, so going into this with threadfin versus gizzard shad, uh, is there any other experiences you've had, Brent? When this comes from a uh, a non-southerner here, about any other types of shad, like American shad or hickory shad, any of the other shads you see like up up north, maybe like the Northeast or uh, the Potomac or anything like that? Uh, not as not that I'm aware of. I, I've never really seen those shad. I've just heard about them. You know, I think a lot of times uh, our schedule when we actually head to those places. I think those type of fit, those shad, like the American shad and all that, are uh, uh, migrating. They'll actually come in from the ocean and all that. I've never been around those. Uh, I've heard that they actually fish for those, and I think they actually eat them and stuff. But uh, when it comes to our bass fishing, it's it's typically uh, all about the uh, threadfin and the gizzard shad. No, oh, definitely. That's uh, something I actually got. Uh, Rick here on the live feed was actually just asking that about uh, American and hickory shad, and and uh, he's saying they're up to 14 inches. So you know, I mean, I guess you can target them more like gizzard shad 
you know, with a large, you know, much larger uh, style, uh, you know, a bait like maybe our big walking boss or something like that to get that big, yeah. you know, sick profile. <clears throat> Um, you know, so going into this, every 15 minutes, we like to take a little break and talk about what, you know, we like having people come on the show here and, uh, you know, specials that they can, uh, you know, take advantage of for joining in on Livingston Live. So tonight, guys, our deal of the night, as you guys know, we always love giving up a deal of the night, 25% off all of our Livingston Lures gift cards, 25% off, all you got to do is use the coupon code EBS. Shad. The crew there in the uh, live chat will type it out for you guys. All it is is EBS Shad. It's also located below on your YouTube screen there. You're going to see in the description you have that EBS Shad, which is actually the third sound uh, in EBS Multi-Touch with the three sounds in a silent mode. Uh, that EBS Shad, you get 25% off Livingston gift cards, and you can purchase any bait you want. And we're going to get in here in a little bit about all the different baits and techniques uh, for catching fish on the shad spawn, and uh, that's actually we're going to get going into how to locate and approach and identify areas for the shad spawn. Uh, but one other option here too that you guys can enter is fishing with Brent Chapman. So Brent, uh, these people are going to be entering to fish uh, the Fish of the Pro sweepstakes, where we can go fishing with you on Lake Kivara for uh, what largemouth and crappie you guys have there. Uh, yeah, yeah, we've got we've got some great uh, uh, bass fishing there, and uh, you know. A lot of times when I'll take people fishing, we'll, we'll, we actually have some uh, amazing crappie fishing there. So uh, sometimes we'll mix it up and do, do some crappie fishing as well. But, uh, uh, you know, it, it's kind of up, up to the, uh, the, the people who, w who win the uh, prize of exactly uh, what, we, what we do fishing-wise. And, and who knows, maybe we can go out and uh, catch a few fish on uh, the, the Livingston's in the morning and go out and catch a mess of crappie uh, later in the day or something. So uh, hey. whatever it works, so we're, we're really looking for it. Hey, hey one, one thing I wanted to mention is I mentioned the, the deal on the uh, gift cards and uh, got to remember Mother's Day is Sunday and I'm sure every mother <laughs> out there would love a Livy Summer gift card. <laughs> hey, I can say my mama got me into fishing, but I don't know if she'd want me to buy any more fishing stuff. I can tell you that right now. But, uh, you know, getting a Brent, good deal, so. <laughs> it is. And you know what you guys can do is to enter the Fish of the Pro Sweepstakes with Brent Chapman. All you got to do is go below the screen there, YouTube description, and it's going to say Enter to Fish of the Pro Sweepstakes with Brent. You can go in there, enter your email address, and you'll be entered to win a fishing trip with Brent Chapman on Lake Kavara. And if you got your phone on you, which we all have right now, all you got to do is text EBS to 313131 to be entered to win a fishing trip there with Brent Chapman. So a couple of cool things going on tonight, and if you guys like what you're hearing and uh, love hanging out with us and listening and learning from Livingston Live, make sure you go to the uh, subscription box uh, there below on your YouTube channel. Uh, click the subscribe button, the red subscribe button. You'll get linked in to all of our future broadcasts and uh, all these great learning opportunities. So now, everyone, don't be afraid to ask your questions on the live feed. I know we got a few people uh, chatting up there. Ask your fishing questions here. We'll get our team of uh, anglers, our regional pro anglers, to help answer them, and then we'll feed those questions in here tonight so you guys can ask Brent. You can even ask Michael, and uh, later we'll also have Casey Ashley on the night, so uh, be sure to send those fishing questions in. So, Michael. Hey, Nick, i got a fun little analogy to compare. Oh. All right, what's up, Dave? A fun little analogy for shad spawn fishing. Imagine, this is pretty much how I've always thought about it. If you, if you go into a classroom full of kids and you have a huge plate of cupcakes and you lay that in the middle of the room and then turn around, how quickly do them cupcakes disappear? Basically, it's the same thing as a shad spawn. A shad, they'll shatter cupcakes of bass, and now you've got a whole group of them all in one little area up on the bank, and that's what they look like. It's a big party. Go and get, eat some cupcakes. <laughs> no, hey, that you know that's exactly what the photo I was showing of the shad spawn and there earlier is when those fish are up on the bank. And actually, I saw that here in, uh, in Lake Medina here in San Antonio. Same thing. Look like a whole bunch of food up on the bank. Well, now going into how our second topic here, really how to locate where these fish are, you know, where these shad are spawning, where the bass are taking advantage of the shad spawn. Michael, I know you had another great question to lead us into this topic. Yeah, you know, I, I wish I knew more about the shad. Uh, I don't fish, I fish mostly smaller ponds and lakes. I don't get the opportunity to fish for them as much. I know when bass come on, they like, you know, shallow, sandy, flats or banks. Um, 
What is Shad like exactly when they're looking to spawn? Do they like the same type of thing or something different? Uh, no, that 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 is a great question because uh, you know it, it does help to uh, break down where where they spawn out. But l like I mentioned, the big key is you got to be out there at daylight because uh, you really see it the the first hour or two of the day, and you can literally. If you're out there later in the day, you can fish right through these areas. They could be loaded with fish and have an amazing bite going on there first thing in the morning. But if you get through there in the middle of the day, you could totally miss it. But uh, the place that, I, that I've seen it uh, probably be the most uh, prolific at is on riprap banks, uh, you know, around bridges and, and, and little uh, passes. You got good deep water there, and you got the big rocks, the riprap rock. And uh, that always seems to be the best, but... Uh, uh, you know, I've, I've seen them spawning on, on trees, on metal docks, around docks and all that. Uh, I'd mentioned Gunnersville earlier. I mean, they actually spawn on the milfoil clumps as well. And I've seen them, uh, you know, on, on, uh, you know, vegetation as well. So I, I think they'll, they'll spawn on just about anything, but by far the best place to look is uh, riprap banks. Awesome. Have you noticed that they uh, spawn like when you're fishing on your tournaments and you're pre fishing, have you noticed days where they seem like they're always on, you know, this day they might be all on riprap and you can run around the lake and they're always on riprap or is it just doesn't really matter? If they're spawning, they're every type of hard structure you can find. Well, I, and, and that's the thing. I, I think there's different levels or of intensity of the spawn. And like I said, I've seen where at Gunnersville, it seemed like they were spawning everywhere and it seemed like there was three to five pound bass eating them everywhere. Uh, that was not the case at, uh, at, uh, uh, Wheeler where we were last week. I think it was very, uh, sp spot specific and, and it kind of even, you know, brings to mind a lot of times on a lake when, when the, when the bass first start to spawn in a lake, there's going to be key areas in the lake where they spawn first. And that's where, you know, if you're the guys that happen to know where those bass spawn first, uh, you're going to have the best results. And it's the same thing with the shad spawn. And, and like I said, after, after these last two events, it's, it's really opened my eyes to, you know, after 20 years of doing this, that there's still things for me to learn. And, and the shad spawn is something that uh, I'm going to be more alert and paying more attention to and, 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 and looking for the shad spawn and, and looking for places. So a place I, I would definitely think, uh, that would make a big difference on where would the shad spawn first would probably be the same uh, relation to where the bass spawn first. And, and one of the biggest rules of thumb for us as a bass fisherman is typically the north-facing coves or north-facing uh, shorelines on a lake because what you get is they're protected from the north winds that, that uh, blow in and then, then the, the warm south winds will push the, the – uh, the uh, warm uh, water into those places. So I would suspect those would be the, the key places to look for uh, the first phase of the, of the shad spawn. But like I said, as it, as it progresses, I mean, I've seen the shad spawn where it's literally just going on all over the lake. Hmm. Definitely. Well, you know, this is a question coming in that you kind of answered there with uh, Lake Gunnersville. We had a question on the live feed, Brent, about the guy's got a lake that doesn't have any rock. It's a bowl of grass. It's a natural kind of pond, and this kind of leads actually into uh, um, you know what Michael was talking about with the ponds and things like that. You know, what uh, is there a certain type of vegetation you see those shad spawning on more when there's not necessarily you know a, a hard bank or a hard bottom for them to spawn on? Uh, you know, the, the the best thing I could say there is you you've just got to get out there and. and pay attention and, and look for what for them spawning because you can clearly see them when you're out there in the mornings mm -hmm. uh you know a lot of times they'll they'll chase they'll follow your baits and you'll you'll be reeling in a, a little square bill and you'll have three or four shad actually chasing that bait in or uh, i remember back in the de old days throwing a, a big spinner bait and they would uh they'd be bumping into the blades as you're as you're reeling it in so that's kind of the dead giveaway so uh you know when you get out there you know just just mm -hmm. look for for uh the places you would typically bass fish for. And, you know, that's one, one thing I always tell people about lakes with vegetation in them is, is sometimes that can be overwhelming with the amount of vegetation. But there's one thing to remember is uh, a bass is an edge species. They love edges. And, and typically 
even in a lake with vegetation is you're going to have edges to it, whether it's the outside grass line, the inside grass line, or maybe even a man-made channel that's cut through it or something, you're going to have some edges there. And that would be a good place to start because, uh, you know, typically those shad are going to spawn in those, on those same edges as well. Mm -hmm, definitely. I mean, you see bass in, uh, you know, green pastures out there in those pond fields, you know, with the grass, and they're spawning on those, like, hard stalks and, you know, really hard, like you're talking about clumps and millfall and things like that. So, you know, it's another great area for shad to, uh, you know, go drop their eggs. I was actually just watching this weekend on Lake Medina and, and I had the same thing that you explained you know, there about the fish coming back, those shad following up grass, your bait, and, and uh, like you know, and so it's something that, uh, you know, they're following it back, and that bait actually right here that I have is the Primetime CB 2.0, I know we're going to get to talking about this a little bit later, but uh, in that Ginrin color, and I have those sh shad following me up all the way to the boat, and then I'd go up to the bank, and they'd just be everywhere, rolling all over each other, so. Uh, Good place to start, then. Yeah, it's a good place to start. We caught about 70 fish that day. It's uh, uh, definitely the shad spawn is going on right now. Um, you know, this is another question coming in from the live feed is, you know, do weather or water conditions affect the shad spawn or your, you know, your acknowledgement of the shad spawn? Uh, you know, like I said, I, I would say it's, it's very similar to the bass spawn. I mean, you know, they're, they're going to want warming water temperatures and, and, uh, you know, there, there's going to be a certain key water temperature that uh, makes a difference. So, you know, like I said, from the research I read online, it says upper 60s. But as I said earlier, I've seen them spawn as temperatures as low as upper 50s to in the 70s. So I would suspect as long as you have warming temperatures, you're going to have, you know, warming temperatures with water in the, in the uh, you know, 60s and higher, you're going to have the optimal conditions for uh, – the shad to spawn, uh, you know, obviously if you get a big cold front or uh, overcast rainy conditions is probably going to turn those fish off to spawning because I, I, I would assume shad are very similar to, uh, to bass, you know, they, they like sunlight, they like those warm conditions. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, those, those would be the conditions I would really pay attention for and look for. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, if you get the, the adverse conditions, the storms and uh, clouds and maybe a lot of rain and mud, that could turn those uh, shad to uh, postpone their spawning as well. Now, it makes sense. Well, this is something that leads off of that question, actually coming from Ronnie, who joined us on the live feed, is he says that there's so many places the shad are there. I'm in areas where I see shad, and I'm not getting any bites. Are the fish there and not biting, or are the bass they're at certain times or certain locations. Like, are they, you know, I see the bait there, the cupcakes are there, leading off of uh, yeah. Dave's joke there, the cupcakes are there, but no bass are there. What's going on? Uh, I would have to say, if you're, the, if you're there in the morning and you're throwing up, you know, a, a prime time 2.0 at them, and, uh, you know, if you've given it 10, 15, 20 minutes or, or, or a, you know, a, a walking boss too or something, if you've thrown it down a couple key stretches and you don't get bit fairly quick, I'd have to say that, uh, that they're maybe not there. Uh, cause you, that's the one thing about the shad spawn is, is, uh, it seems like when you get around them, they're fairly easy to catch. You know, if you, as long as you have the right baits and you know, something that, that imitates a shad, uh, you're usually going to catch the fish. So I would have to say, uh, you know, if you if you spent uh, a little bit of time there, then and haven't had a bite, it's time to go uh, check out another place. And and that's the thing when when the shad spawn really gets going, and I think that's probably why there's so many billions of shad is there's so many of them that even even in those prime areas where a whole lot of them are getting eaten, there's so many of them in other areas where there may just not be the concentration of bass that they're able to to spawn and have plenty more shad for. Uh, for the for future bass so if you're not getting bit definitely go look somewhere else nice nice and and another thing is uh, you know when those shad are up on the bank you know do you believe that there may be some bass out a little bit deeper you know waiting to move up and chase and eat those you know chase and eat those shad yeah there there could be and, and that's where uh, you know pulling out maybe trying a, a howler or something that gets a little bit deeper uh, to uh, you know to to get some of those fish that are potentially moving up. Uh, you know, the one thing, you know, kind of talking about 
fishing for them and techniques like that is, is if you do find them in the morning and you'll catch them up, they're shallower and then they tend to slow down or, or, or uh, the bite dies down. That's typically the first step is to back out and fish a little bit deeper. So uh, yeah, you could catch them coming up as well. Nice, nice. So that's something that, you know, Ronnie, we know you're watching on the live feed and uh, we want to answer everyone's questions. So make sure you ask your fishing questions there on the live chat on the right hand side of your YouTube page because we're going to get them answered here tonight with Brent Chapman and if uh, you know we can't answer every single question or else we'd be here till midnight but we have our regional pro anglers on on the uh, live chat there to help answer your questions and feed us uh, those good questions we talk about here on the live feed so Michael you got any uh, other questions after we've been chatting here about how to you know kind of locate and identify areas got any uh, parting questions before we head off you know, honestly, you guys talked about so much good stuff. All of my questions ready answered. You know, I was going to say um, weather, water conditions. You guys covered that. I was going to ask you about before even hitting the lake, what do you do to ter determine high percentage areas? You already talked about riprap or whatnot. So you guys, I learned so much already. I really appreciate you having me on. Answered every single question I had. Hey, good, Michael. Well, we appreciate you, man. Everyone, uh, make sure to go to uh, One Rod. One Real Fishing uh, on YouTube. You can check them out. Uh, but Michael, thanks a ton for joining us, and we look forward to working, you, working, working with you further, my man. Hey, right. Thank you, guys. I'll be uh, listening in. Best of luck to you guys during the season. <laughs> hey, th thanks a ton, Michael. Take care. Hey, I, I got one. Hey, uh, Brent, have you noticed that – is there a difference if the water's muddy? Does the shad spawn still kind of going on even if the water's super muddy or, you know, up and all? Does, does that make a difference? <laughs> Yeah, you know, obviously, uh, you know, different bodies of water have different clarity. Uh, you know, I'm I'm on Texoma right now, and it's part of the Red River, and and uh, what they consider muddy here is a whole lot different than uh, other lakes. I mean, the the mud that's here would scare people to death, but believe it or not, these fish are used to it. And and uh, uh, while I didn't see any shad spawning here the last couple of days, there's no doubt in my mind they're going to spawn in it. And the only difference there is is uh, as much as I, I love the, the shad patterns that Livingston has, uh, you know, my next favorite colors are going to be the chartreuse colors. You know, I, I may switch up to a melon shad or something like that just to put something out there brighter. But, you know, you're still throwing a bait that has the body shape and imitation of a shad. You're just throwing something out there a little bit brighter to them. And even with that, with the muddy conditions, that EBS sound technology is going to be that, uh, that extra uh, – extra benefit to hopefully get a few of those fish to locate that bait and catch them even in that dirty water. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about that, you know, throwing a prime time square, any of those, uh, you know, with the EBS sound technology, it actually mimics the actual sound of a live bait fish. And it's something that uh, our EBS multi-touch technology, EBS shad is that third sound on those EBS multi-touch lures. And leading into a little break here, tonight and through Sunday, 25% off any Livingston gift card. Go to www.livingstonlures.com. There at the, uh, the description down there, you get 25% off Livingston Lures gift cards. And all you need to do is use the code EBS SHAD. EBS SHAD. Coupon code 25% off. You can buy whatever you want. We're going to lean here into talking about baits, tips, tactics about how to actually catch these bass now that we kind of understand why these bass are feeding on these uh, cupcakes, shall we sh say, up on the bank. Now, another quick question here, another quick uh, lead-in is that you guys can enter on a fishing trip with Brent Chapman. All you got to do, down below, make sure you enter Fish with the Pro Sweepstakes. Brent Chapman, you guys can enter to win an expense-paid fishing trip with Brent on Lake Kavara, Kansas. And uh, all you got to do is click the link down below in the description, enter your email address in the, uh, the entrance page there, and uh, we'll be drawing a winner here at the end of this month. And uh, another quick final uh, thing here for this break is we are giving away five Livingston prize packs. We're giving away a prize pack on the Walking Boss Topwater and uh, Livingston Lures hat to five lucky contestants tonight. And all you got to do is find on Facebook. I'm going to bring it up here uh, really quickly. I'm going to bring it up here. Our... Uh, on our Facebook page. All you got to do is go to the Facebook page and find our Bone Gizzard Shad, a new Livingston Lures color. All you got to do is go and find our Bone Gizzard Shad color post on Facebook. I'm going to find it here for you really quickly. 
All you got to do is find that Facebook. We're doing the, the giveaways a little differently tonight. Go on to Facebook, Livingston Lures. The link is down below in the description. All you got to do is find that post. It's not that far down. It's only maybe a couple. We got a hot new color bone gizzard shad that just arrived in time for the shad spawn. And all you got to do is type fish catching machine. Because really it is a machine. It's a lure. The electronic bait fish sound technology. And uh, all you got to do is type that in the comment section of a we got a hot new color bone gizzard shad post. Type it in there. We're giving away five Livingston Lures prize packs uh, tonight. They're walking boss. Uh, we may even throw in that bone gizzard shad uh, uh, primetime CB 2.0 as well. So make sure you type in fish catching machine there on Facebook. So now, Dave, we want to learn the, the nuts and bolts to this. We want to learn what can we cast, where do we cast, and how do we catch these fish. So I'll get off the uh, the screen share here really quickly and lean into you know some of the the best baits and techniques. So this question everyone's been asking, you know, I got a question here from Bruce in the live feed. Brent, for targeting the shad spawn, what are your top three reaction baits for fish in the shad spawn? Top three reactions uh, baits for for the shad spawn. Uh, a bait that I that I fell in love with last year, and uh, we actually caught some fish on it last year at Havasu during uh, during the shad spawn, and and that's the uh, the new Walking Boss Two. Uh, if you haven't fished it, it's a, a, a f phenomenal bait, uh, and uh, you know as it you know it, it comes in a variety of shad colors. That bait's a lot of fun. It's really simple to fish. Throw it out, wind it in. Uh, everybody loves to fish top water. Uh, the, the other bait I, I love is the, the Pro Ripper. Uh, you know, lipless crank baits have been around forever, uh, but Livingston's are the only one with the uh, EBS sound technology. And then uh, probably my, my most favorite by far, just because it's so versatile, I can cover a lot of water with it. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I can fish it in a foot of water and I can fish it out to about six or seven feet. And that's the uh, prime time two. 2.0 trying to figure out this camera still so uh you know the, the those have got to be my my three most favorite baits right there and uh you know the neat thing about the shad spawn is it kind of goes hand in hand with uh when the shad spawn kicks in that's when topwater fishing gets really really good too so it's a time to you know really break out the top waters and uh you know where a lot of times throughout the year you might have one top water bait tied on uh d during the shad spawn i'm gonna have uh three or four, even five different types of uh, topwater baits tied on to, uh, uh, you know, uh, maximize uh, your catches on topwater. Oh, nice. And, and you know, the Walking Boss Part 2 is a heck of a bait. And uh, do you ever throw in the, the Walking Boss, the original Walking Boss, another good option? Oh, I, 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 absolutely. The, the Walking Boss as well. Uh, it's just I, I, li I like the Walking Boss too. Uh, because it seems like it's a bait I can fish faster, and it, and it's a lot easier to, to fish. I mean, uh, it, you know, a lot of people have trouble working, uh, you know, the, the walk the dog technique, the, the walking boss too. It's a bait that you throw it out and you wind it in, and uh, you just got to figure out the uh, the uh, cadence of the retrieve to, uh, to get those fish to bite. But uh, it's just a simple bait to fish, so I feel like I can fish it faster, cover a lot more water, and... Uh, has some great success, and, and it's something that's uh, that's very, very unique. Uh, no one else out there has a bait like it, and uh, had a lot of really good uh, results with it. Nice, and I know the the uh, other color. We have someone asking about some other options and colors for the square bills. What color, uh, um, you know, what color options there? And like that, what is it? The prime time? You have the CB 2.0 or the 1.5? Yeah. Uh, there's yeah. one of your top. Uh, what are your yeah, color options? I, I've got it. Uh, I, I've got it in the uh, um, the the beauty shad is really good in the uh, the the clear water, but uh, you know my my standard go to color, uh, you know no matter where I go is the uh, is the chartreuse shad. I mean chartreuse shad just seems to be such a versatile color all around the country. But uh, you know that that's the one thing I, I'm I'm kind of looking here at all of our different color options we have. And I've kind of noticed for, for people to figure out, uh, you know, how to how to match that shad hatch at least as, uh, you know, all, all these colors. We got clear water shad, triple X shad, real shad, chartreuse shad. So any of those that say shad behind them, and you've picked a good uh, a winner for sure. Yeah, I guess it just all depends then on uh, on water clarity. 
So uh, well, everyone, your own preference as well. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think uh, you know, I think we as anglers get pinned in on a color more than uh, than let's say the fish do. As long as it's a a shad pattern, uh, you know, that I think that they'll all catch fish. There's no doubt about it. I think it's it's what is more appealing to our eye to uh you know i i might like uh chartreuse shad uh and uh you know another guy might prefer uh, the real shad but they're both going to catch uh, plenty of fish for sure mm -hmm, definitely well everyone uh, uh brent we're going to be talking more about best baits and techniques uh we just want to welcome another another pop-in guest to help hang out with us tonight on livingston live uh 2015 bassmaster classic champion Casey Ashley in the house. Casey, how's it going, my man? All right. Good. Hey, Casey. How y'all doing? <laughs> good, Casey. Good. How's that internet reception, man? I know uh, we were uh, a little chatty there earlier. Everything looks good? It's holding steady. It was getting about as good as you're going to get, I think. <laughs> well, good, good. Well, you know, the lead, this leads into the same question for you, Casey, is, you know, what reaction baits, what are kind of your top three uh, reaction baits for fishing the shad spawn. Like what you know, what lures do you prefer? You know, the shad spawn for me. I grew up in an area where we don't really key on a shad spawn. We key on a herring spawn. But you know, mm -hmm. everywhere else in the country that we travel, it is a shad spawn deal. So you know, for me, top water is really the the only bait that I I got confidence in when there's any type of shad spawn going on. Um, you know, the Livingston walking boss. That's that's one of my favorite. Uh, the blue pearl. That's the Oh, the bad, that's one bad dude right there. That's my go-to color. You know, all over the country, clear water, muddy water, it doesn't really matter. You know, that's uh, that's my go-to. And, and once the, the shad spawn, you know, it goes for a month, a month and a half. Um, the water temperature is normally 65 to 75 degrees. That's, that's kind of when you want to look for it. Um, once it gets towards the end of the shad spawn, you know, towards the tail end, I like to throw the walking pop. You know, the bone color, it's... Uh, it's pretty versatile. You know, the reason I put that towards the end of the shad spawn is because you've got a 50-50 chance, you know, while you're searching, you're either going to run on shad fish or either you're going to run into brim fish, and that bait will catch both. So that's why I picked that towards the tail end of the shad spawn. Nice, nice. Now that's definitely uh, some great options for fish and reaction baits uh, there during the shad spawn. But Casey, you mentioned the herring deal, and you know this is a shad spawn deal. We may even do a whole entire Livingston Live on just with you on herring spawn, because we know you're a Carolina boy, and and those herring are everywhere over there. Uh, but in terms of targeting the herring spawn, what are a couple uh, other lure choices you may use there? Uh, you know, reaction baits for chasing the herring spawn for our guys that are watching that don't have shad. You know, uh, a spinnerbait is, is number one, um, mm -hmm. but the, the, the Livy's the Jerkmaster, the 121, that's a, that's a key bait during the, the herring spawn as well because a lot of times those fish to do will back off in the 8 and 10 feet of water. You know, they'll be on – the difference between herring and shad is herring, they'll spawn on, you know, rock, shallow – long shallow bar, shoals, stuff like that, more so than, than shad will spawn on anything like a dock float. Uh, a bush hanging in the water, you know, they'll spawn on anything, but a herring has got to have a bottom and it's usually really shallow. So, you know, early morning, the whole top water deal, the fish and the bait are both up shallow. Um, but later on in the day, they'll back off and suspend off of those deals and you can catch them on the, on the jerk master pretty good. Nice, nice. So a little, a little bit different than, uh, you know, than the hard, hard shad spawn. And that even may even lead into the question we had earlier uh, from Ronnie about, we had a guy asking about what do, uh, what to do when there's not any bass around the shad on the bank and they may just be off a little bit deeper. Jerkmaster 121 would be a great option for those fish in like that 8 to 12 foot zone throwing a jerk bait. Now Brent, this leads to another good uh, you know, question for you here is, um, you know, I'm reading here on the live feed and we got plenty of good questions but this one comes in, the guy says he has two feet of water and grass. There's not, a, and the fish are up spawn, and the bass are fairly up shallow. You know, is there any specific lure for that ultra shallow, kind of grassy uh, conditions? Is there any reaction bait lure that you throw for those, uh, um, you know, for those bass eating the shad spawn in really shallow conditions? Well, I, uh, you know, obviously the uh, the walking boss or walking boss too, because you know they're on mm -hmm. the surface, so you can 
you can get away with that real shallow as well. But uh, another bait that comes to mind is uh, the uh, Pro Wake. And this is, uh, this is a super, super shallow bait. I mean, it's a wake bait, uh, or you can work it below the surface and it'll dive about six inches deep. And, uh, you know, the, the, the Pro Wake was uh, kind of one of the, uh, the originals. And uh, as you can see, it's got a, a real short lip on it and it'll dive and uh, dive real shallow, but disperse a lot of water. And uh, you can have a lot of success around the shad spawn with a bait like this as well. Perfect, perfect. Well, this goes into a little bit of guys are asking questions about, you know, what specific gear do you use? So let's uh, let's cover kind of the three main uh, baits you want to talk about there, the Walking Boss, the, the Primetime Square, uh, or even CB, I like the CB personally, and, and the Jerkmaster 121. For the Walking Boss, what rod, reel, line are you throwing that on? Uh, for, for me on the Walking Boss, I'm using a... Uh, a uh, Wright McGill. Actually, all the rods I'm using are Wright McGill Pro Insight Brent Chapman rod, and same with the reel. Uh, the the walking and all these reels that I'm going to use with the uh, seven to one gear ratio reel. I, I like a fast retrieve. Uh, on the top water lures, I'm I'm using a, a 40 pound Gamma Torque braid. I love braid with uh, top water lures, and the only difference with the uh, with the uh, uh, crank baits is I, I'm usually throwing those on uh, anywhere from 12 to uh, 16 or 20 pound uh, gamma fluorocarbon. No, oh, sweet. No, definitely. You know, is there anything a, a specific rod action? I mean, I know you're using braided. Uh, yeah, uh, on the uh, on the uh, walking boss, I'm using those on a, uh, a 7-2 uh, uh, medium heavy action. Uh, we we call it the uh, uh, frog rod, and then uh, on the uh, on the uh, Crank on the square bills. I'm throwing those on a uh, seven foot. Uh, uh, it's a it's a uh, soft tip uh, glass cranking rod, and I love the the softer tip. You know, the for for crank baits, uh, you get that uh, uh, you know look, look, that soft tip to where those fish will really inhale that bait, and then when you've got them on there fighting, thrashing around, uh, they're not typically going to tear out of their mouths with a, a real stiff rod like a lot of people like to use. I like the the soft tip for sure when it comes to uh, fish and crankbaits. Mm -hmm, definitely. And anything special, then, you know, hold up that uh, that primetime square or that primetime CB you had up. Uh, hold that bad boy up. So that is, uh, you know, that's that chrome triple X shad. That's a killer color uh, for around the shad spawn. You know, any specific gear you're using then for that, that 1.5 CB? Yeah, that, that same uh, seven foot uh, cranking rod. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's it's the uh, it's the deal when it comes to crankbaits. So, you know, a little bit softer tip and uh, that high speed reel. I'm I'm working it where, uh, you know, I'm working those baits pretty fast. Like I said earlier, you can you can cover a lot of water with these baits, and and that that's the thing that's made a, a square bill so effective. I mean, uh, I I was out fishing yesterday throwing one, and, and I realize you know I've realized that how much I fish a square bill anymore. And uh, I think square bills have come along so well in the last five to ten years that uh, guys don't fish spinner baits as much anymore. I was throwing a spinner bait some yesterday, and I just I my my confidence is is in a square bill, and uh, you know the the rod is a big key to that as well. Mm -hmm, definitely. And this goes in, Casey. We got a question for you, uh, kind of on what gear are you throwing. So on the Jerkmaster 121. When you're fishing a little bit off the bank for those fish that are waiting on, uh, that are waiting on those shad to go up and spawn or waiting to go up and feed on them, you know what gear are you throwing the Jerkmaster 121 on? You know I'm I'm a quantum guy, so uh, I'm throwing a seven foot medium action. It's a smoke rod. Uh, it's got a real soft tip, but it's not so soft that you can't launch the bait. You know that Jerkmaster throw is really good. I'm throwing it on 10 pound high seas fluorocarbon. Uh, the reel is a quantum smoke reel. Uh, I like a 6.6 six to 1. You know, it's not super fast, but it's fast enough to keep up with it. And, uh, you know, once you get that thing down there, I, I always make long casts with my jerk bait, and you're twitching when it hits the water. You know, I wind it down, you know, six or eight turns just to get it get it going, get it down in the, in the fish's face, and then I'll start my, my cadence. You know, and some, some days they like it fast. Some days they like long pauses in between twitches. So you just have to play with that. But, you know, mm -hmm. that's a lot of wasted time when you start twitching, you know, the first 20 feet or so mm -hmm. your jerkbait's trying to get down to them. So, you know, I, I don't waste my time with those those twitches and that 
first five or six feet of water. I like to get my bait down. And yeah, and get it down to the get it down to the fish. Well, that's something that uh, actually somebody's asking a question here with jerk baits on live feed is. Have you, with, with the Livingston Lures EBS technology, with the sound technology in that Jerkmaster 121, um, is there anything that you do differently now with the sound technology at your advantage, like, you know, in terms of the pause, are you getting any bites there on, on the pause of the jerkbait as it suspends? I have noticed that you get a lot more bites on the pause, you know, because of the sound technology, you know, even if you're not moving it, your bait's still fishing. So it is, it is a pretty good key item that, that Livingston has that nobody else has. No, oh, definitely. That's actually something I wish I had our our videographer on uh, tonight. He uh, is new to fishing, and I took him out here. We're throwing. Uh, it was actually in the winter time. Fish were all suspended uh, with the Jerkmaster 121, and literally all he did is cast it out there, let it sit, and the fish would come up and eat it after 15, 20 seconds. It was a true testament to the you know the extra advantage that you get with the sound technology on such like a jerk bait. So now going into a little bit of the uh, the colors. So Casey, I know Brent already kind of talked about his favorite colors. Are there any specific colors uh, that you specifically like for the for the shad spawn? You know, I'm not even going to start naming colors, <laughs> but I am going to tell you, you know, anything shad, the water clarity definitely depends on whether you want, you know, a, a transparent color or not. You know, the clearer the water, you want the see-through colors. Uh, if the water is not so clear, then you don't want transparent. But as long as you pick anything shad colored, um, you're good. It's it's all of a matter of confidence. You know, all fishermen, fishing is 90% mental. You know, that's that's what I always tell myself. So whatever you've got confidence in, that's what you need to throw. As long as it's a shad color. Now, the blue herring lakes, do they all, does it have to have some blue on it? No, that's where people, you know, it's called a blueback herring, but it's really not blue. Um, you know, the old color come out a long time ago. People started making spinnerbait skirts, and Zoom came out with a fluke. It's called Glimmer Blue, which the blue pearl kind of looks like that. Um, you know, but a blueback herring's back is almost an olive greenish brown color. Hmm. Uh, and then the sides are, you know, silver, just like a, a bait fish. But yeah, I don't, I don't know how they got the name blueback herring because they're not blue at all. <laughs> that's one thing that bugs the heck out of me, man. I went to South Carolina to go fish a college tournament, and I had all these blueback herring lures. And then I found out the herring aren't even blue. It's ridiculous. No. And, and uh, the funny thing is I was actually just talking with some guys uh, today in the office about new colors, and this Ginrin color, and our uh, most of our baits now have this Ginrin color, is a really good option for mimicking herring because it's that olive kind of drab green with a little bit of holographic uh, sides to it, you know, is a really good option for those herring lakes, which, of course, most people go buy an industry standard blueback herring, and all of a sudden it's got a bunch of blue on it, and they show up to the lake, and the, the locals are whooping their butt on uh, uh, olive, dream, olive drab green colored baits. So uh, it's a good way for locals to uh, keep away the outside fishermen by telling everyone to go buy blueback herring colored lures. So uh, you guys will actually see here 2017 uh, coming out with a new blueback herring color that doesn't have any blue in it. It's an actual blueback herring color. So we're excited to be bringing that out. We might be the first real bait company to uh, have a blueback herring color that actually matches blueback herring. So going into this, I got some questions on the live feed. Uh, this is something that uh, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but I wrote it down here. Bridge pillars. So what specific reaction baits are you using around, uh, and I'll send this to uh, Brent first, around bridge pillars and you know other rocky areas, a lot of deep water, where those fish aren't exactly right up on the bank per se, but they're out suspended around those bridge pillars as uh, you know as those bass are waiting to go up and, and, and eat them. Yeah, you know, a absolutely. Uh, you know, the the two baits that come to mind there are uh, you know the walking boss. I mean, the walking boss will catch those suspended fish for sure, and that's probably one of the best techniques. And then also, just like Casey mentioned, the uh, the jerk master as well. So those would be, that, that would definitely be my approach would be those, those uh, two baits right there. If, uh, if I was going to uh, attack some fish that were around the bridge pillars. And then even that, if they pull up on the rocks, those are, are, are still a, a great bet up shallow on the rocks as well. Mm -hmm, definitely. And, and uh, Casey, you know, can you add into that and expand upon that? I mean, what are a couple you know, reaction bait options for that type of situation? I know you guys have a lot of those in South Carolina. 
that you know Brent named the the, the walking boss and the and the jerk master. That is probably the my two top two. Um, but one thing you know later on during the shad spawn, they may not actually be spawning anymore, but they do like hanging around bridges because of the shade and because of the the cover you know on the piling. And you can go to the crankbait, you know, and, and one crankbait that I like to use is the, is the deep impact. Um, you know, it, it dives real deep, but if, you, if you'll understand on a bridge, a lot of times when you're trying to crank those columns, you can't hardly make a long distance roll cast because a lot of the bridge, you know, you don't have much clearance between the water and the bottom of the bridge. So you need that deep crankbait. You might only be diving to, you know, eight or nine feet. Find it down as fast as you can and hit the column and pause that. That'll get you a lot of bites sometimes. Nice. Now I've seen the, that down here in Texas, guys tuning their uh, tuning their like prime time CBs or tuning their deep impacts to run like left or right, and then running it into the bridge piling, which uh, is kind of an old old school tactic for fishing docks that you could totally. Uh, you guys out there in the live feed that are asking uh, bridge questions, you definitely could uh, tune those crankbaits and hit those bridge pilings over 20, 30 feet of water if those fish aren't coming up and eating a walking boss, uh, you know, up from those school and fish. So. Leading into some more questions here. The, uh, oh, so <laughs> Richard here on the live feed. Brent, this is a question for you. Red hooks. What's up with the uh, the red hooks there on the pro wake? Okay? Looking like all those baits you're holding up have some type of red hook on them. What is that? That 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 is a tournament ready uh, uh, bait of Brent Chapman's, and uh, uh, you know, for for me, I when when red hooks came out, probably. 10 or 15 years ago, uh, you know, some guys are kind of skeptical of it and all that, but uh, there's, there's one way I look at it is I don't feel like red hooks uh, deter me from catching fish, but there's no doubt in my mind they help me catch another fish throughout the year. And uh, I'll tell you just a quick little story where I fell in love with red hooks was we were at Lake Champlain one time and uh, uh, the, the fish were eating jerk baits and, and they, uh, they, the smallmouth were in a real negative mood, and you really had to work the jerk bait really, really fast and real erratic just to get one to even react to it. And uh, I actually learned it from from a buddy of mine. Uh, we we were kind of working together, and we were out there on this flat, and we were you know getting a lot of follows. And every once in a while, we would uh, you'd be able to hook up with one of these smallmouth, and a lot of times you'd lose them. And uh, my buddy comes over to me, and he's like. Hey, those red hooks that we've got. He's like, you need to put. Uh, he said, put uh, a red hook on the front. He said he'd done it, and the the next two bites he had, the the smallmouth had literally ate the whole bait. And uh, I did it, and I was a believer. I really believe, you know, there's times throughout the year where the fish will bite it be better because of that red hook. I think. Fish naturally, you know, I think when a, when a bait's going through the water over the surface real fast, they're just seeing little shades and, and little flashes. And that red, I think, is just something that a, that a, that a fish sees as, as blood or, or uh, a weakness and, and causes those fish to react a little bit better. Because I, I have seen it make a difference where uh, a lot of times you'll, you'll catch a, a fish, especially smallmouth, where they've actually ate the red hook. So... Uh, you know, I always put a uh, uh, an eagle claw treble uh, up on on the at least on the front hook. I always put a red a red treble hook. Uh, something else that I that I do to my baits. Uh, w whenever I'm in a tournament situation, as you can see on the back of this, on the back of the feathered treble here, I've got actually two split rings on here, and that's another little tip uh, you can take with you. But uh, when I'm in a tournament situation, uh, I've always when I always add. A secondary split ring to my to my bait and I'll just show you uh, like this one this one doesn't this only has a single treble hook on it so when a fish twists it can only twist so far and then something typically will give and it, it sometimes it's the fish's mouth but if I add an extra split ring to it this thing can rotate so much farther so that's something I just do for my own belief is adding an extra split ring and that red hook to, to put a few more fish in the boat. Oh, definitely. That's something. That, you know, and the, the stuff the way it is will still catch fish, but this is just something that that I do to to put a few more fish in the boat. Nice. No, definitely. And and uh, you know, a lot of our uh, howler series lures have the red uh, the red treble already on them in the front. 
Um, you know, and that's something that we're actually looking at doing here in the future is adding a red treble to all of our baits so you guys don't have to do it as a modification. It just comes with it right out of the package. Now, Casey, for some reason I see you're muted on there. I don't know why, but can, can you hear us? And, you know, what uh, are you using a red treble on any of your baits? Oh, yeah, we can't hear you, son. I got to, you might want to check your uh, microphone on the upper portion there. It might see a little microphone that has a little, a little line through it. Want to get Hopefully he didn't hear all my secrets. Maybe I did that so he couldn't no, hear. No, I, I don't want him right to there, hear Brent. all those uh, secrets. <laughs> Let me see if I can get him off the mute for some reason here. Hey, he Brent, quick, while he's working on that, is, is there a reason you only put the red hook in the front and you don't put any more anywhere else? Uh, it's just something I, I've done over the years. I, I, you know, we, I think, you know, we, we prefer the, the fish to eat more of the bait. So I just put the red hook on the front there. There are times where on a jerk bait, I've put a red hook on all three. Sometimes, uh, you know, I think it puts a little too much red on the bait. I'd, I'd rather mm -hmm. give them a focal point, which is more towards the head of the bait. So that's why I just put, uh, uh, that, that one single red hook on there. No, definitely. Well, I think we got Casey back finally. Are you there, Casey? It says you're supposed to be there. Hold on here. All right, now now speak again. I'm gonna be like a dog, I'm like a dog telling you to speak, but uh, you, you got you got me. You got you. We got you. We we're we we're talking about <laughs> red hooks here, but uh, everyone keep making sure you ask your fishing questions. We got about ten more minutes to go here uh, on Livingston Live, so we want to make sure we answer your fishing questions tonight. So make sure to ask your questions on the live feed. Uh, before we get into our last segment, we're going to be talking about other ways to catch fish that are on the shad spawn, other tactics, and answering your specific questions from the live feed uh, from the experts we have here in the room with us. You want to make sure that you can take advantage of the deal tonight. 25% off Livingston Lure gift cards all the way through Sunday. 25% off. All you got to do is type in EBS Shad. That's the third sound on our EBS multi-touch. You got original, craw, shad. EBS Shad is your coupon code, 25% off tonight at LivingstonLures.com uh, for our Lures gift cards. You can use those for any lure you want. Once you get those gift cards in the mail, use them for anything. And also, Brent, where uh, where can they go fishing with you? We're doing this Fish of the Pro sweepstakes. Where, uh, where actually, uh, you know, ho hopefully they're going to come and uh, they're going to go fish my home lake, Lake Quivera, there in Kansas City with me. It's uh, the lake I grew up fishing, and... Uh, it's a it's a lake. I, I I don't call it a fishing lake. It's usually a catching lake because uh, when you go there, we, we don't go fishing. We go catching. So uh, it's always a fun place uh, for, for me. You know, like I said, I enjoy going there because uh, it's a place I can go work on techniques and practice techniques. And, and I can usually take people there and, and show them a really good time and catch a lot of fish. Nice. And so the way that people can enter that sweepstakes, all you got to do is go below in your uh, description box there on your YouTube page, and uh, you're going to see Fish of the Pro Sweepstakes, Brent Chapman. You can enter there, click the link, enter to fish with Brent Chapman on Lake Kivara. Also, if you got your phone, type or text EBS to 313131. Enter via text. Enter to win a chance fishing with Brent Chapman. And uh, also, if you like what you're hearing and you love hanging out with us, and uh, just make sure you click the subscribe button below uh, so you can get updates from us and uh, get a notification when we go live every single Thursday night to uh, teach the fishing public how to catch more fish. And, uh, you know, finally here, going into uh, our last 10-minute segment, make sure you ask your questions. want to make sure we get every question answered. Now, we got prize packs to give away tonight. We always love giving away Livingston Lures prize packs and getting EBS technology into people's hands. All you have to do is go to our Facebook page. I'm going to bring it up here real quickly. All you got to do is go to our Facebook page and find the Bone Gizzard Shad, the Bone G Shad, Primetime Square Bill, Primetime uh, Coffin Bill actually. Go find that post on our Facebook page. And what I want you to type is fish catching machine into that comment section. We're going to pick five winners out of that comment section 
to get one of these Bone Gizzard Shad Primetime CBs, and uh, we might actually throw in some extra goodies in there. As always, we love taking care of our customers and uh, uh, taking care of our fans. So go in there, type that, find that on our Facebook page. Uh, if you don't have Facebook, type it in the comment section below on YouTube. Uh, you can type it in there. We're going to pick five winners to get a Living Lures prize pack. So now that we got a little bit of time for you guys to get your question in, let's roll into this next segment where we're going to be talking about the different types of tactics, other tactics besides reaction baits uh, on catch fish on the shad spawns. So let me get out of here real quickly, and we'll be back in business here with Brent Chapman and Casey Ashley. So, guys, next and final topic here for the night, last 10 minutes, make sure you, uh, we're going to be answering your questions on our live feed, everyone, so make sure you ask them, because if you don't ask these questions, they ain't getting answered. So we're going to teach you guys tonight all you need to know. So, Brent, what are three other baits or techniques you use to capitalize on the shad spawn, non-reaction uh, bait techniques? Well, okay, if, if they won't bite the 1.5 or 2.0 square bill or, or the Pro Ripper or the Walking Boss or Walking Boss 2, uh, you know, there, there are other baits. Casey mentioned a, a spinner bait. Spinner bait uh, is really effective, especially, uh, you know, there's, there's places that you just can't fish, uh, you know, a bait with a lot of treble hooks in it, and, you know, a lot of vegetation, shallow vegetation or around like lay down trees and all that. So a spinner bait's a good choice. Another one that's real, real uh, effective for them is a swim jig. Uh, swim jigs are real good at uh, imitating shad. And then, uh, you know, lo and behold, there's always that, that big lay down tree or a brush pile that's on the, the bank where the shad spawns going on and you got to have something you can flip in there so for me it's a it's a tight lines uh, uv flipping tube that uh I'll, I'll i'll flip it into that heavy cover where you can't put uh you know a moving bait and and hopefully catch a few fish that way as well nice nice casey this is uh going to you what are three baits during the shad spawn that are non-reaction baits that you're using to target those fish well, Brent got one of them. It's the white swim. You've got to have one of those tied on. I don't care where you go with the shad spawning. Uh, another one is a soft plastic jerk bait, like a Zoom Super Fluke. You know, that's a, that's something that's a little more subtle, a uh, little more finesse tight, but you can still work it fast or as slow as you want to. Um, you know, and, and, and another thing is, is super old school, uh, and I still throw it some, not as much as I used to, but, you know, just a, a white floating worm. <laughs> White floating worm. Yes, sir. I'm old school fish. That's I. I got told about the white floating worm one day when I was uh, down there being being from not from the south, and someone told me about a white floating worm, and I was like, "So you mean you're taking like a a bleached old gummy worm or something, or a, or a cream an old cream worm, and and uh, tossing it on two little egg hooks? And uh, by God, I had a guy in the front of the boat in an old old chair. And a fishing chair and one of those hand tiller steer trolling motors whooped my butt on a floating worm. It will catch them. Sometimes that's all they <laughs> Well, you know, this is a question coming from the live feed, Casey. What about the underspin, a famous classic winning underspin there for you uh, during the shad spawn? Is that something that you use in the shatter spawning or even the herring? You can. Um, most of the time by then, you know, like I said, I grew up fishing mostly herring type deals. And you can catch mm -hmm. a few still throwing, but that's not a bait. You know, you have to you have to wind it too too fast too slow. Um, <clears throat> and a lot of times it, it the way it works coming through the water, you know, you get that pendulum action. It's not really a bait you can throw out there and keep up in one strike zone. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's that, that tends to make it more of a, a cold weather type deal. You know, it's more of a dying shed instead of a fleeing shed. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. That's something that uh, guys like, you know, your cold water classic win and, and uh, a lot of guys fishing cold water are throwing that. So not necessarily something to throw during the shad spawn or the herring well, or the herring spawn, but something that's more, uh, you know, maybe afterwards summertime or cold, cold and maybe hot water technique in summertime. It, it will catch those bridge column fish. <laughs> those bridge saying. column fish, good, good idea there. Another thing to throw through those bridge columns uh, from guys who are asking there on the live feed. Well, this going into, you know, those other techniques you guys are talking about. This comes in from Rick on the live feed, and Brent will go to you first. When or what tells you to stop chasing the shad spawn bite and begin working your way out towards deeper water? Ah, uh, when they quit biting. I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> it's pretty simple, and you quit seeing the shad. Uh, 
you know, it's pretty simple to, to know when a shad spawn's going on. You know, something that we didn't mention uh, in this thing, and, and I'll point on it because it's a good spot, is the other way to really recognize a shad spawn is look for the birds. Uh, herons and egrets will give it away better than anything. There's nothing better than running down the lake and you see the, the shoreline covered with uh, those white egrets and the big blue herons up there because they'll, they'll give away a shad spawn in a hurry. But when that stuff starts to go away, when you – you know, when you get out there bright and early in the morning and uh, you're going down those rocky banks and you're not seeing the shad, it's a pretty good indicator that, that the shad spawn has, has disappeared. Or, or if you're not getting bit, it's time to, uh, to, start, uh, to, to start looking elsewhere. And usually that means uh, getting out deeper. Uh, is there anything specifically, so say you were catching them, uh, you know, on the bank during the shad spawn and maybe the next day or during a tournament, uh, you know, the shad quit spawning. Is there anything that you look for near that shad spawn that those bass may be sitting on or, near, you know, uh, and moved to away from the bank? Yeah, I mean, the, the next best thing to do there, and, and you can't ever go wrong looking for points. Uh, you know, look for the, for the next points out. The, those could be secondary or, or main lake points. Uh, you know, if, if the fish throw you a curveball and, and you're trying to hunt them down, you can't ever go wrong fishing a point. Points are, are the best places to, uh, to, to pinpoint fish, uh, you know, one, once things change. So, you know, get out there and, and uh, just, uh, you know, start going deeper. And, uh, you know, I absolutely love to, to, to tie on the deep impact, the 18, and uh, start, uh, you know, picking those points apart, you know, from, from 10 foot out to, to 20 foot. I mean, that, that's some of the stuff I enjoy more than anything is getting out there and and picking a spot apart with a, with a big crankbait. Nice. And Casey, this is something for you on that same question, uh, you know, to expand upon. Is there anything you specifically look for or uh, kind of tells you that the shad spawn is kind of over or even say, let's go to you on the herring spawn? Brent already answered the shad spawn question. On the herring spawn, when those are, you know, what kind of tells you that they're done and what do you do after that, shad, or that herring spawn is done? Still, birds tell you when it's happening and, and when it's over. Um, mm -hmm. You know, herring, they, they spawn more so on the points and on the, the shoals and the high spots. You know, they don't necessarily spawn just down the bank like shad do. Uh, and when the herring are gone, they're gone. They don't pull back to the first dock. They don't pull back to the first, you know, blow down. They leave. They're just like stripers. They, they head out to spin over deeper water. So after the shad or active spawning and herring, it's two totally different things. Um, once the herring are done, those fish turn into striper. They suspend over 50, 60, 70 feet of water, and you're trying to catch them schooling. Um, now, shad is, is a whole different ball game. But, yeah, that's, uh, that's one time, you know, and after it happens, I'm talking the herring spawn. They're two total different animals on the way they react when they're done. Uh, and of course, if a fish is zoned in on a herring, they're going with them. So out to the middle of the lake, you know, and it's, it's hard to catch them. No, definitely, definitely. Well, that, that's when you go to a different lake is when those uh, herring <laughs> do that. You just go somewhere different. <laughs> <laughs> that's when you go find those brim fish I was talking about. <laughs> well, there you go. There's a little nugget for everyone uh, out there during these Livingston Lives. We find little nuggets. I mean, all the information is great. But you find some like go-to nuggets of information hidden in there, and uh, for you guys that are down in the south, we got herring lakes. Go find those brim once those herring move off the bank. Uh, make sure to ask your questions on live feed, everyone. We have a couple more minutes left. We'll answer one more question here. Uh, let's see here. Oh, Kevin Guidry, he uh, won a contest with us last week. Uh, we appreciate you uh, on the live feed. Final question here. We talked about shad. We talked about herring. Now, leading into the sunfish spawn, the, the, the brim spawn. Well, Brent, what, uh, you know, what's, what was one lure, one specific uh, reaction bait lure that you're using to target those fish once they move off the shad spawn and now they're targeted on the, the brim that are up spawning? Well, like I said, I'm a, I'm a pretty simplistic fisherman, and I know I've talked a lot about the uh, primetime 2.0 and we've talked about shad colors, and all I'm really going to do then is I'm going to switch up maybe colors of the baits. Uh, you know, and Livingston's done a great job of uh, coming up with the colors that us pros have asked for, and uh, 
you know, they've got a color called money gill that uh, looks more like a bluegill. I'm, I'm just going to switch up the areas I fish and switch up maybe the colors of the baits. But uh, I just love to fish square bill crankbait. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave the same primetime square bill on. I'm just going to change colors a little bit and uh, try it in a little bit different area and hopefully have good success on it there as well. Nice, nice. And is there a, a, a difference in location between the shad spawn, uh, where you find those the shad spawning, and where you find those bluegill spawning? Yeah, blue, bluegill seem to spawn more in like pockets and uh, protected areas. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, a little more like what bass will. Uh, mm -hmm. So probably a lot of the places you, that a guy found bass spawning, uh, they, they'll find uh, the, the the brim and bluegill spawning as well. But uh, you know, just looking for a little. Uh, Isolated pockets and that type of stuff is a good place to start uh, looking for those type of beds. Nice, nice. And so, Casey, I've field this question to you, my man. Uh, brim, you know, once those fish move off the herring and onto those brim, is there one specific, uh, you know, reaction bait they're using to target those fish that are moved off the herring and now are focused up on those brim? The walk and pop 77. You know, <laughs> the are gone. I can't let the top one down. And, you know, the... The, the walk and pop, the, the popper chugger type type bait, that's that's got brim road all over it. And, you know, I really don't steer away from color that much. You know, I'm still going to stick with the bone until they start hitting at it and missing it. And and one key that I do when I'm brim, you know, fishing brim beds, you, it's still kind of the same thing. You're fishing at a low light situation, which, which that's when it's best. You can still catch a few stragglers throughout the day, but... I try to work it as fast as I can over the top of those fish. So, you know, I don't really think that color matters, and, and my confidence is in bones. So that's uh, you got to stick with what you know, and that's probably the deadliest brim bed, brim pattern fishing bait that, that has ever been made. Mm -hmm, the classic popper, and now we got the walk and pop 77, and we actually have coming out uh, here just landed in the warehouse a couple of days ago, actually, the walk and pop 67, the smaller walk and pop. Um, available in both, of, and there's are going to be available here actually hopefully in the next uh, about week, uh, but we have those in the bone color, and we also have them in true brim, which is personally, being from Washington State, we don't have any shad, we have a bunch of bluegill and perch, and that true brim color is a fantastic bait as well, uh, more the natural color in comparison to like the pure bone shad. So uh, everyone, we appreciate your time here at Livingston Live, and we know that everyone's got to get on to their Cinco de Mayo uh, partying here at 8.15 p.m., but uh, make sure, join on that live feed. I got all these questions in here. If you have questions that haven't been answered, our regional pros will answer them. And uh, you know, we want to make sure you guys get one last send off here. Make sure you get your 25% off uh, at your Livingston Lures gift cards using the code EBSSHAD. And uh, make sure below, click subscribe so you can always tune in to Livingston Live every Thursday night and hang out personally with your favorite professional anglers and learn from them. Now, Casey, we appreciate your time, my man. We're going to have to schedule a, uh, a Livingston Live just about herring fishing. Uh, we're, going to have to, we're going to have to do that. Those fish that are going after the herring, we're going to have to schedule a, a Livingston Live on one of those. So everyone stay tuned here. Maybe, you know, when would be uh, for either the herring spawn or maybe offshore herring, so the schooling, 40, 50, 60 foot, you know, summertime patterns. When would be a good time for us to do a Livingston Live on that, Casey? You know, right now they're spawning. Um, mm -hmm. And they'll do the, the over deep water schooling type deal on through through September till the water turns over. And that's usually when that stops. Mm -hmm. So it, it lasts all through the summer. You can catch fish on top water on Herring Lakes from February until October. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? We'll definitely plan a, uh, you know, here going in the early part of summer, we'll put a Livingston Live out just on Herring Lakes uh, in case you'll be a resident herring expert. So you guys are going to be in for a heck of a learning experience on that. Dave, thank you so much for joining us, my man, helping co-host tonight. I, I uh, have a quick question to ask both of the guys. Hey, real quick. Yeah, let's knock it out. We all know that DBS technology works really great on these baits. Have you all used the HydroWave during the shad spawn to kind of work with the EBS and, and getting the shad going, especially the blue herring lakes? You know, on the blueback lakes, um, it has gotten to be, you know, such a big deal and, and so much pressure, so many guys throwing the same stuff. Uh, the HydroWave for me is kind of like your – your stick of dynamite you know it's your last resort if you know the fish are there 
they're not doing anything, I'll turn it on. And yes, sometimes it will trigger them to start. But I like to start out with them not knowing that I'm there. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. Brent, what's your opinion on that? I, I'm, I'm kind of the same way with Casey. Uh, a lot of times like that, uh, you know, I, I won't use it the, the first time I go to into an area. But if I know they're there and they're not cooperating, that's when I'll turn it on. And uh, just a quick, quick story about that was at Gunnersville, the year that the shad spawn was going on. Uh, the shad, the fishing was amazing about the first two hours. It was midday. It was hot. Nothing happened. I'm on this big flat and I had my hydro wave on and I'm working across the flat. I hit this one little spot uh, in the bay and the fish came up schooling all around my boat and I caught a couple and I moved on past and I kept watching that spot. They never came up schooling. I got back to the spot with my hydro wave on. The fish came up schooling all around the boat. And I managed to catch a couple more. There's no doubt in my mind it, it made a difference in that situation. So I'm kind of like Casey. I'll first get into the areas and try to sneak up on them and uh, try to catch them that way. But uh, once uh, once I can't get them going, I'll usually turn the hydro wave on and start experimenting with sounds. And and it's amazing. Just like the red hook, sometimes throughout the year, uh, it'll it'll uh, it'll trigger fish. And there's no doubt in my mind it'll help me put another fish or two in the boat, just like the EBS sound technology does. Yeah, it's crazy talking about how maybe four or five years ago, people thought sound technology was a gimmick. And then comes out the hydro wave, Livingston lures with our EBS sound technology. And now it's really changing the game uh, in a multiple variety of ways. And we're taking that sound technology that's in this box on your trolling motor and actually putting the real biological sound of a single bait fish inside a lure that you're tossing out to those bass and they're actually honing in on and feeding. So... It's a whole new way to make fish bite, and uh, it's an exciting, uh, you know, forefront here in the industry uh, as a part of Living Some Lures. So, Casey, thank you so much for joining us. Dave, thank you so much for joining us. Brent, as always, pleasure. Thank, thank you very you much. Guys. Yeah, thank you guys for joining us on Living Some Live tonight. Have a great week uh, here. We'll see you next week at Toledo Bend uh, for the Bassmaster Elite Series, and we'll be there with the Living Some Lures tent. So any East Texans, come on out. Uh, we'll have the Livingston Lures booth out there with our Livingston Lures pros, and uh, you know, hopefully, have Brent and Casey both there in the uh, the top 12, along with all our other team Livingston anglers. So, parting words: make sure you click the subscribe button below if you like learning from our tour pros. And uh, till next time, everyone. Always on a Thursday night, 7 p.m. We'll be here next weekend or next uh, next Thursday. So, till next time, everyone. Thank you, guys. Have a good. Take care. Have a good night, guys. Have a good one. Bye.